following program is recommended for those 16 and over as it contains sporting violence, possible bad language and flashing imagery. Ladies and gentlemen, good evening and welcome. From the four corners of the world, to the four corners of this ring, the fight starts now! Let's go! Well, we've hit a cold snap here in Liverpool this week. Hope you're out at warm wherever you are. The action will be heating up at the MS Bank Arena this Saturday night. 5,000 fans expected for a busy night of boxing in the north. Press conference coming up shortly. We'll be hearing from our undercard fighters, Robbie Davies Jr. and Dara Foley, Rhiannon Dixon, Johnny Fisher, of course, Peter McGrail too, and our two main eventers, Jack Cullen, who's been the nearly man uh, on a couple of occasions, but has put in some brilliant performances over the last three years, says he will not lose this fight on Saturday night. Is he catching Diego Pacheco at the right time, or will the brilliant super middleweight prospect prove too much this Saturday night? Go Pacheco! We're dealing with an impressive, gifted fighter in Diego Pacheco. Diego Pacheco is in our eyes one of our hottest prospects in world boxing, not just US boxing. After I get this win, I do feel that people will start recognizing me more as a contender than as a prospect. They're all saying he's a superstar. But if he thinks he's coming over here and just getting someone who's going to step over, he's got another thing coming. He's a tough fighter. He's, he has a lot of heart. I've been in a lot of tougher fighters than him. And he can say whatever he wants. Where is it cheap? He's making a big mistake. He's definitely making a big mistake. I want to knock him out. I want to stop him. Get ready for a fucking wall. Hopefully he's working hard, man. I'm coming with everything I should let Afternoon, everybody. Hope you're all doing well. I'd just like to point out that during that single <laughs> shot there, which we don't normally do at the top, Darren Barker very nearly just casually strolled in. And well, I, panicked, avoided. I panicked. You did like the Ali lean back then just to stop yourself <laughs> coming in vision. I wish we'd have just seen a little bit of this. Um, anyway, um, great to speak to the fighters yesterday. I haven't yeah. seen Diego Pacheco in person for a couple of years. Mentioned that we went out to Guadalajara to cover one of his early fights. He's come on a lot as a fighter. And even though Jack Cullen's had a couple of defeats in the same span, he's come on a lot as well. We know they've both had great preparation. I think this is set to be a really interesting fight. I think so. I mean, start off with, with Pacheco. Um, don't judge a book by its cover. You know, young, fresh-faced, um, a really laid-back personality. You know, his demeanour is very uh, unassuming, if you like. But when that bell goes, he's he's an absolute monster. Mm. You know, he's calculated. He's 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 fast. He's accurate. He, he can punch with both hands. Uh, and confidence is always growing. He's made some changes to his his team, etc. He's showing that the sacrifice, the hunger, the desires there. Uh, but Jack Cullen proving once again why he's he deserves these opportunities. Because every time he steps up, he gives it his 100%. He's, I said it yesterday, he's experienced the good, the bad, the ugly. Mm. You know, he's won, he's lost, he's had that draw with Zach Chelly. He's experienced it all. Um, and I'm glad he's getting his shot. And look, we spoke to him yesterday. He wasn't hiding behind his words. You can tell when someone's lying. Mm. You know, they look at the, the floor, etc. He truly believes he's going to win this fight. He's very laid back traditionally, isn't he? Yeah. I mean, even when Kevin Sajid came in late notice to replace Emery Kukor, he didn't seem fussed at all. And I think maybe he was a little bit too laid back going into that. But there seemed to be an absence of that and a presence of, um, I've taken this really seriously. I don't want to be the nearly man again. Yeah, yeah. And, and when you spent a whole camp sparring with, with Callum Smith, of course, Pacheco's been in with David Benavidez, both of them in concurrent camps. I mean, that's perfect preparation for, for both of them, um, either side to, of the Atlantic. Cullen, of course, will have the home support, which if things get tougher and could be yep. important. And Pacheco, obviously boxing in front of a, a, a different crowd to what he's used to. But it is for Pacheco, the last fight before you would look at him. And if he, if he gets through this in good fashion on Saturday, you'd have to say he is now a top contender. Well, and, look, and if he was to get past Cullen, I think it would be a good marker yeah. for us to know how good Pacheco is. He looks, you know, unbeatable at the minute, but Jack Cullen's a very, very good fighter. He's dangerous. He's experienced now. He 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 knows how to win these big fights. He's also experienced losses. He the, Nothing's alien to Jack Cullen now. That's why he can just go in there and express himself and try and, you know, upset the apple cart. Look, he's, I think he's at a nine, nine to one 
uh, against, you know, sort of underdogs. So he's got no pressure, only the pressure that he puts on himself. And I've no doubt that this will catch fire straight away. I don't know how long it's going to last, Chris, but whilst it lasts, it will be entertaining. Yeah, really, really good. We've got nine fights um, in total on Saturday night for you. Busy one. Starts all at half past four on Before the Belt. Myself and Spider Richards uh, will be commentating on those because Darren's been bumped up because Andy Lee is, is away. So you hear Darren and Mike on the main card starting at seven o'clock. Rhiannon Dixon and Vicky Wilkinson uh, will be in action for the inaugural Commonwealth Women's Lightweight uh, title. Peter McGrail back in action uh, after a couple of brilliant performances, looking to go 7-0 and against Nicholas Patelli um, from Argentina. Johnny Fisher um, back in action. will be bringing about 800 fans up from all over the country um, against Alfonso Damiani from Italy. And then Robbie Davis Jr. and Dara Foley uh, stepping in on three weeks' notice to replace Liam Parrow. But again, right up for this one um, in a brilliant chief support. Uh, and one of them will push on a little bit higher up the rankings at £140. We're going to be hearing from all of them this afternoon. Um, but first, let's head to our undercar fighters on before the bell. They're standing by on stage with Eddie Hearn. Well, good afternoon, everyone. Welcome to Liverpool, ahead of a big card this Saturday at the MS Arena, live and exclusive on the zone around the world. Three press conferences for you here today. Before the bell, we start with, as we introduce the fighters up here, George Liddard, James McCarthy, Dean Dodge, Akib Fiaz, Paddy Lacey, and Campbell Hatton. Important fights for all of them, big support for all of them as well, as we go into a card co-headlined, if you like, between Diego Pacheco, one of our biggest stars in world boxing, 17-0 against Jack Cullen. Robbie Davis in a big fight against Daryl Foley as well. Rhiannon Dixon goes for the Commonwealth title. Peter McGraw, in my opinion, one of the best prospects in world boxing, steps up. And, of course, Johnny Fisher brings a huge army of support up from Essex and around the country for a big crowd on Saturday night at the MS Arena. George, we'll start with you. Fight number two, great performance last time out in London. Um, you're going to have the benefit of many Essex fans coming up for Johnny Fisher. You've got some coming yourself as well, but great to be having out in number two in a great fight city in Liverpool. Yeah, no, def Is it working? It's not working. This one? Yeah, there we go. <laughs> um, yeah, no, really excited. Looking forward to putting on another good performance. And yeah, like you say, Johnny bringing all the fans up from Essex is quality. In Tony Sims's gym, great team of fighters there at the moment. Of course, Joe Caldina going for the world title. Felix Cash in a big fight coming up. Many others as well. What's your feelings after your pro debut? Great performance, nice and composed, and still obviously very young and, and learning in the sport. Yeah, no, look, I want to go on to do big things, but I know there's obviously boxes I've got to tick off on the way, and I've got to keep proving myself. But I definitely believe I will down the line. You know, being around such experienced fighters, it's only going to bring me on. And, uh, yeah, promising future. And a key as well, not just to box in London and around those areas, but all across the country. Going to be important for you coming up to the hotels, soaking up fight week, and, of course, being away from home. Yeah, no, definitely. I enjoy it. You know, it's, it's nice to have the, be, be at the occasion like this. And, um, yeah, hopefully you get some new fans for across the country and, uh, yeah, put on some big performances in the future. Well, George Liddard, look forward to seeing you in action on Saturday. Campbell Hatton. Still a young prospect, but when you look at the experience you've had now in the UK and around the world, really starting to find your feet in the professional ranks and are looking forward to your first fight in Liverpool on Saturday night. Yeah, so it's another, another city ticks off the list that I've wanted to box in. I, uh, I, I was here watching Ben Algeria and it was a top atmosphere then and I was just really welcomed by everyone and excited to box here myself and now I am. I... Uh, now, I've been on a little tour all over Abu Dhabi, uh, boxed in Spain twice and up and down the country, so just uh, really excited for Saturday. Yeah, and also box behind closed doors as well through, through COVID as well with no fans. You boxed at Tottenham Hotspur, we should throw that one in as well in front of a small 60,000 crowd as well. Do you pinch yourself when you look back at those experiences? Obviously, what you would have learned during that process would be invaluable, but really now well positioned to move on and step up the rounds as well. Yeah, when you look back, it has, it's been crazy. Even like Gibraltar being stuck on a boat and it's all surreal experiences, but I think it's going to stand me in good stead. And like you said there, I'm starting to find my feet now and I think I'm sort of settling down into my career where I'm taking that pressure off myself now bit by bit and I'm starting to show them improvements, a good finish to the, end, uh, to the year at the end of my last year. Uh, uh, second calendar year as a pro and I want to show more of the same for 2023 improvements and 
start showing people that in a gimmick, um, I'm a, I'm a proper fighter and show everyone what I can do. I know you're still young, but you, you do look different. You, you look like more of a man now. Do you feel that way in your career? When you started off, we go back to Gibraltar, four rounds. You couldn't breathe after four rounds, as fit as you were, but just staying calm now, and that's key as well in the ring. I'm sure Matthew's been getting that into you as well. Yeah, so that's what everyone's been saying. I've been maturing physically, mentally, technically as a fighter, and um, it's, it's time to start kicking on now. I feel like I've done a lot of my learning, and there's a, le a lot more learning to go, but I think I'm starting to show people now. I think any early criticism I got, I'm slowly starting to to change people's opinions a little bit and we're starting to get there and I think this year I can really start kicking on. Well, thank you, Campbell. Big crowd coming up from you from Manchester as well and two of our biggest ticket sellers on the roster, Akib Fiaz, Manchester as well, uh, and Paddy Lacey. Sold a huge amount of tickets. We go to their fight now. James, we'll start with you. Um, you're up against this man. He's got some army coming on Saturday night. It's going to be a great atmosphere, exactly the platform you want to be a part of. Yeah more than proud to be on this show and obviously it's in the Echo Arena, well MNS to anyone that doesn't know and it's obviously against Paddy Lacey, like Paddy's from the same kind of area as me so after his army know me as well so you know it's going to be a good interesting fight and I believe that both of us are going to put on a good performance for people that are coming, I don't think it's going to be a fight that's going to be one to be missed, I'm looking forward to it. Paddy, very good fight, it's a huge ticket seller, sometimes that gets lost, you know people look at someone as just a ticket seller. You fancy your chances in this fight? Massive opportunity. I mean, you win this fight, it's, it's winner stays on stuff. Of course, I fancy it. I wouldn't have took the fight if I didn't fancy it. I'm not coming for the payday. I'm not coming to get beat. Obviously, it's boxing, anything can happen in one, one punch and one round, but I'm not coming just to give Paddy another number and another win. I know he's a fit kid. He's tall, he's rangy, he's a good fighter, but, you know, I'm coming to fight as well. I'm not coming to just give him an easy day. Thanks, James Paddy. A little local derby for you makes a, a difference and a huge amount of tickets sold for this card as well. Um, making that progression now, going from, we know the, the backstory, it's kind of never irrelevant, but now we focus on the boxing, huge support and every opportunity to develop the career on Saturday. Yeah, so I think when you had me on the Ben Algieri fight, I, uh, I was in the gym at seven in the morning, fit and floored and in the afternoon, Chester training of the night, I actually missed the Chester game to box that night, so I packed in the football, unfortunately gutted to pack in. Focus fully on boxing now, so I think you know what will make a massive difference going forward. That I'm living just the boxing life now and not getting pulled from here to there. So. Talk about that support as well. You know, you are still doing a limited number of rounds. You know, normally people will come out for the pro debut and you'll see the numbers just diminish slightly. Not really with you. Massive support from this city. Yeah, I think everyone you know likes the story of the underdog and you know things kind of fell apart and football and I can pick myself up and go with something else and this city's amazing for us, isn't it really you know I thought people would drop off and thanks Ed for keeping the show on after you know Callum got injured thanks we'll all get paid now pay our bills but I thought you know some might fancy it but out of the four under five hundred tickets have sold there's not two people I think refunded the tickets what that might even be down to Callum do you want to out them do you want to yeah, say um, their names I want the seat number because I've got them all by seat number <laughs> And also good to be up against a local fighter yeah. who you know is going to bring it. Massive opportunity for him as well. You need to be yeah, look, on it on Saturday night. Jay doesn't shy away from a fight. He's a tough kid to remain. So it's fireworks and it's Saturday night. I look forward to seeing you two go at it on Saturday, as I am these two. This is a really good fight. Dean Dodge against Aki Fiaz. Dean, welcome. Um, again, same kind of question. Big platform for you. Big opportunity. We know you always come to fight. A lot of people talking. This, this could be a really good fight with Aki Fiaz. Yeah, thank you for having me on for um, for the matching show, and um, thank you to my um, manager Errol Johnson for getting me on this. Um, this fight's going to be a real good fight, and um, it's, it's not one to be missed. Akib is, is all action as well, same as you. Um, this is really the moment, these, these kind of turning points in your career where you can have a big win like this on TV and move forward, big fights, big opportunities, and, and one fight away from that on Saturday. 100% um, win this fight and it's going to change, um, change my career around for the good. So, um, yeah, I look forward to Saturday. Akib, welcome. Um, a great experience for you out in Abu Dhabi as well, obviously on the same card as Campbell, getting that experience in as well. A lot of people talking about this fight, good opponent for you as well. Again, huge numbers, similar numbers to Paddy coming from Manchester as well. And, and big moment for your career now as you look to move into the championship fights in 2023. Yeah, um, thank you for the opportunity, Eddie. Um, out here in Liverpool, 
on a big show. Thank you for keeping the show on. Um, yeah, I'm just ready to go on Saturday. I'm, I'm, I was born to do this. Um, and on Saturday, you know, I'll get, get a chance to show everyone what I'm really about. What's the focus for 2023? I know, firstly, all eyes on, on Dean Dodge, but moving towards English Championships and, and putting yourself in a position to fight for the British title as well. Yeah, um, for the first time in my career, I mean, when we went for our run a few weeks ago, I feel like, you know, I've got a sort of plan and certain goals in place. And, you know, last time was my best performance through being active and in the ring. Um, so I feel like on Saturday I'll be even better and I'll show people what I'm really about, yeah. Fought some international opponents. Good to face a fellow Brit, someone you know that is going to come to fight on Saturday and a massive opportunity for him, as similar to Paddy as well. Going to be a, a proper fight. Yeah, um, like you say, it's a proper fight, fighting an Englishman as well. You know, they always come, but I've done it before already, millions of times. I've been fighting my whole life and I was born to do this, so I'm ready. Well, look forward to that. Aki Fiaz against Dean Dodge. Really good before the bell section on Saturday night. We're going to have head-to-heads up here and we'll move on to our second stage of the press conference. Thanks, Eddie. So, uh, it all starts at 4.30 uh, Saturday night, as you just saw there. George Lillard and uh, his opponent will be in action, Paddy Lacey and James McCarthy. Uh, nice little local derby yeah. uh, for them. I think that's going to be good. Um, Aki Fiaz and Dean Dodge, the one that uh, I'm looking forward to the most on, on the card. Dean Dodge, we saw him in against uh, Rhys Bellotti, who we know can really punch. Dropped down a couple of levels after some high-profile defeats, Francesca Grandelli and Jordan Gill and Ray Ford, of course, all the way down to area level, which I think is probably slightly below where his, his yeah. ceiling is. Um, not many people walk forward against Bellotti. He's normally the one chasing the action, hunting people down, pushing them around the ring. He got pushed around a lot in that fight. It, it, well, I would say majority of the seven rounds yeah. it lasted. You know, he was on the front foot, pushing him back. He's naturally aggressive. He yeah. comes to fight. So Akib's going to have to be smart with his movement. Can't sit in the, the, the pocket too long, though he's very good inside. Mm. Um, it's a good fight. It took Bellotti quite a while to, to break him down and to eventually get to him. Um, but he took an awful lot of stick. But I tell you what, this is a good... A good fight for, for Paddy Lacey, as we, as we expected. I thought he might have a little bit of height and reach advantage, and just seeing them head to head, he does there. And I think he will have the better of this if he can keep this long, establish that range early, and get James McCarthy's uh, respect. McCarthy, is, uh, he's had a couple of fights, but he's not, I think, coming at quite late notice. One was against Michael Hennessy, it was the only time that he's been stopped. Um, but he'll be fitter, fresher, and he buzzes around the target, attacks. He's, uh, He's pretty ferocious up close as well. Can Paddy Lacey keep him long? Can McCarthy shut the space down? That's over. I think it's over six rounds, second uh, on the bill. Yeah, and Aki Fiaz and Dean Dodge, really, really good step up this with Fiaz. 10 and 0 now, no stoppages. And we were talking about that yesterday. I'm saying how, how surprised Carl Frampton was because he knows, having sparred multiple rounds with him um, in the last two or three years, how, how hard he can punch. Um, but we just think maybe it's. it's going to come as the opponents step up and as people start letting their hands go yep. against him and certainly Dean Dodge will be pushing Aki Fiaz back as much as he can. Similar in stature there as you could see on the face off and that was a big difference uh, when Dean fought Reese Bellotti. Mm. He was a lot bigger was. Uh, than Reese, um, and that may be one of the reasons. He does approach the fights very, you know, physically strong and, and wanting to be on the front foot but he was able to, I think, down to pure size. He's not gonna, it's not going to be as easy no. because Aki, like I say, very similar in stature to Dean, but that promises to be a good fight. Look, do you know what? I'm looking forward to the bill from top to bottom. I'm so glad that this fight, uh, this show, sorry, is still going ahead. Yeah. You know, there's fighters at different stages in their career, but it's so important for all of these, you know, for, yeah. the, for the novice pros that are coming through, for, for the guys like Robbie Davis Jr. and Foley who are on the cuffs of big things. A loss is very dam damaging. So it's so important that all of these guys and girls are keeping busy. They're also still bit, fighting. Yeah, and bigger picture as well in, in a cost of living crisis when everybody's scraping the pennies together, fighters are, are desperate to get paid as and when they can. And it's not easy when these things fall through because they've got to then find yeah. the, the money for another camp and to reset and go again and you know for, for people at down the bottom end of the card who aren't earning the money that the, the guys and the girls at the top end are um, th those are crucial nights work for them so um, yeah credit to Eddie and to Matram for keeping the bill on and the main bill does start seven o'clock um, on the zone the uh, Fighters are just making their way uh, up onto the stage. Now, Rhiannon Dixon and Vicky Wilkinson will be contesting the uh, inaugural Commonwealth lightweight title. Um, it's uh, I guess an interesting thing for the women to have these steps going through now because it's really been for, for new prospects coming in who've got the potential to get to world level, beating up 
sort of substandard opposition and then jumping straight in sometimes against opposition when they're overmatched and, and under experienced but getting to that point now fighters like Rhiannon and Dixon where there are levels to go through and credit to the Commonwealth Boxing yep. Council for putting these belts up for grabs uh, and giving women an option to fight and Vicky Wilkinson fought for the belt at 126 against Christine Shergold I think it was in September down on the southwest coast just a bit of a non-event of a, of a yeah. fight. Neither fighter really grabbed the ball by the horns. But um, interesting to see Rhiannon Dixon in against Shergill just a couple of months later. We saw quite a contrast very, in how she very, approached the fight. Very good performance that was. Polar opposite. To, to Wilkinson's against Sheryl Gold. I mean, it was it was punch perfect almost. Mm. Very good performance. Certainly was. Well, um, we'll be hearing from them uh, first as part of uh, our undercard press conference now. And I think all the fighters are on the stage. So without further ado, uh, let's head out back to Eddie and let's hear from on them now. Well, welcome back as we start the second press conference of the three here in Liverpool ahead of a huge night of boxing on Saturday night from the MS Arena, live on DAZN around the world. Three fights to discuss up here. Nicola Batelli to my left, Vicky Wilkinson, Rhiannon Dixon, Peter McGraw and Johnny Fisher, all part of the main TV card on Saturday night. We'll start with a fantastic female fight between Rhiannon Dixon and Vicky Wilkinson for the Commonwealth title. Two undefeated fighters, both stepping up until the major titles on Saturday night. Vicky, we'll start with you. Two undefeated uh, fighters, you got the opportunity, saw you at the, the workout yesterday, big opportunity, and are ready to go on Saturday night. Yeah, it's a, it's a great opportunity for me, you know, and I appreciate, you know, giving me this opportunity. You know, it, it's one of them things I didn't think would happen, but I do appreciate it, and I thank you. Undefeated, part of the smaller hall, non-TV circuit, if you like, but done your rounds, got your experience, Good amateur pedigree as well. No amateur pedigree from Rhiannon, but looked very good as a pro. People talking of a 50-50 fight and a big opportunity for you to catapult yourself into those major championship fights. Yeah, I, I do think it's a 50 fight. I have got amateur background. I know Dixon hasn't, but she's got a great team behind her who's gave her the experience what I haven't had as well. So I think it's 50-50 all the way. Obviously, we know about the explosion of, of female boxing on the, the biggest scene, but talk it a little bit about that, you know, from those smaller shows as well. Obviously, you've been grafting away, looking for an opportunity, it comes as well. But have you seen that growth of female boxing, even on, on that circuit as well? Obviously, we've seen it in the amateur gyms as well, but from top to bottom. But your first taste of, of the bigger stuff on Saturday. Yeah, it, it, you know, it's growing. It's going to take time for women boxing to be as good as, as big as men. But I think we're getting more opportunities now because of people like yourself who will have us on their shows. So I think... You know, for women boxing, this is just brilliant. And getting more women in the gyms, you know, obviously they've got to start at amateurs. Uh, so, you know, it, it's just a great opportunity. And Rhiannon and all female fighters at championship level love to fight. We've seen some fantastic fights recently. We should get another one between you two as well. Two exciting styles and, and both desperate to win on Saturday. Yeah, I think it'll be a really good fight because we've both got different styles. So it'll be a good fight. Rhiannon, welcome. Commonwealth Championship. Um, scheduled for eight rounds on this card. And then, obviously, we had conversations with, with Paul Reddy, STN, and, and Anthony talking about making that step now to championship fights. Commonwealth title, a major title on the line. Excited for your first championship fight on Saturday. Yeah, I mean, when we were given the opportunity, like, we thought, yeah, let's just take it. You know, we don't know when we, if we were going to get another opportunity like this, so thank you for that. And, um, yeah, I just think we've prepared throughout this camp and we're ready now to start pushing on to big fights like this, so I'm really excited for the weekend. Last time out in Leeds, a tough opponent. You boxed really, really well. She gave you eight hard rounds as well. Kind of great preparation for moving to that championship fight. We saw a lot of improvement from you as well. Do you think that as you step up the quality of opposition, we're going to start seeing those, those big improvements in the ring? Yeah, definitely. So I always say it's like having a good dance partner with boxing. Like sometimes you can be dragged down to people's levels, you know, like with the journey people, um, well, men and women. Um, but I believe, you know, Vicky's a really good fighter and I think she'll probably bring the best out of me on, on the weekend. Obviously, once you go to 10 rounds, once you win those titles, there's kind of no looking back, if you like. So victory, I know, is first and foremost in, in the mind on Saturday, but some huge opportunities if you can be victorious. Yeah, definitely. You know, I'm just taking each fight as it comes. You know, I'm learning with every single one. You can see the progression from my first fight here, uh, well, at the MEN, to um, when I was last out with Christine and the progress that I'm making. So I'm just taking each fight as it comes and just trying to learn and progress as much as I can. 
Well, thank you, Rannan. Great fight. Two undefeated fighters, Rannan Dixon and Vicky Wilkinson, going for the Commonwealth title on Saturday night. We'll kick off the broadcast live on DAZN around the world. We're going to go to Johnny Fisher. Johnny, we made the press conference a little bit later so Francesco Damiani could be here. He's still 20 minutes away, so you can say whatever you like about him um, for now. Liverpool, a new venue for you, a new venue for the Romford Bull Army. Hundreds and hundreds of them, close to a thousand coming up to see you on Saturday night. Eight rounds, things starting to get a little bit more serious now for you. You've had a great camp and ready to fight in Liverpool on Saturday. Yeah, definitely, Eddie. Thank you for having me and thank you to the city of Liverpool for welcoming me. I've uh, had a really good welcome here. It's great to be here. Um, as long as Alfonso Damiani turns up on Saturday night, that's all that matters. I know he's a, a proud man, very fit, and he's going to come to have a fight. And as you said, my first eight rounder, so it's another little step on that journey. And the, the picture's becoming a little bit clearer. Just every time, we get a little bit more mature, and I'll, I've just got to keep ticking them boxes. I know as, you know, as we said to Paddy Lacey, we talk about your support, everyone focuses on that, but we focus also on your ability, the, your progression, the hard rounds of sparring, the way you're looking in the gym as well, maturing, becoming a rounded fighter now, and that's key for you to progress to this eight-round eight, eight stage as you start looking towards English titles this year as well and, and hopefully moving towards British titles as well as, as the next 12 to 18 months progresses. Yeah, definitely. And uh, that's one thing I, I would like to say to all my supporters, the people that have paid their hard-earned money, not only to come and watch, but they've got to pay for their train tickets, their hotels. It's really great. And it inspires me that then people want to come and watch me and support me. And yeah, the picture is becoming clearer. I've got to get through the eight rounders first. And listen, them titles that were maybe a year ago, two years ago, were out of the picture. They're, they're becoming a little bit clearer and a, a little bit more in vision and we can see them on the horizon. So... The only thing that matters is winning Saturday night with a good performance and uh, we can map it out from there. And a shout out as well to your team and, and not just Mark Tibbs and, and your management team, SJM, but also your old man who's done another great job on tickets. You know, in amongst his celebrity lifestyle now, we know he was in Brighton last night giving out prawn crackers. He's got a gig in Newcastle tonight as well. And we just heard in the taxi that he was even paid to appear in a Chinese restaurant in the Dorchester recently with some city traders in a celebrity appearance. It must be difficult for you having such a, a, a famous father. Well, that's the thing. Um, it is difficult because I've got to get punched in the face to earn a living and he's got to eat chicken balls to earn a living. So uh, it's, not the, it's not ideal, but listen, he, he, he really does help me. And it's great that he's, he's adding to the Romford Bull Army. He's, he's a massive personality. He helps me massively with my tickets from the very beginning. And he doesn't do it for himself. He does it to help me. And that's, that's why uh, he's so great to have around. And he knows to keep, uh, keep himself to himself when it comes to the boxing work. Mr. Tibbs, he tells me what to do. And his job is on the ticket. So it works very well. Well, one of the most exciting heavyweights in the country. Johnny Fisher takes on Damiani on Saturday night. We talk about exciting fighters. We talk about pedigree. For me, Peter McGraw is one of the standout talents in world boxing already. He had his professional debut on a matchroom and the zone show. Unfortunately, we let it slip. We lost Peter McGraw. I sulked for a couple of days, but we got him back. And we've got him back at 10 round level, ready to make a massive move in 2023, moving into championship fights. We want British, Commonwealth, European, and world honors for this young man. Going to be a huge ticket seller from Liverpool. Just a couple of, not even a week's notice to announce this fight. Sold masses of tickets for Saturday night. His opponent, Nicola Botelli, welcome. And Kieran, our, our trusty translator as well. Um, Nicola, welcome. Uh, we know how tough you are. We know how experienced you are. But you have a very tough opponent as well in Peter McGraw on Saturday night. Bienvenido en primer lugar, Nicolás. Sabemos lo duro que eres, también lo experimentado, pero te enfrentes a un oponente bastante difícil el sábado por la noche. Bueno, muchísimas gracias por la invitación a Macho Rom. Así que nosotros venimos trabajando duro eh, para llevarnos la pelea para Argentina. Así que eh, vamos con todo el sábado. Thank you, first and foremost, for the opportunity, Matchroom, for, for allowing me to be here. So we've put in the hard work now, and we're, you know, we're convinced and we're, we're clear that we're going to take this win home to Argentina. You've got plenty of experience, uh, boxed at a high level. We saw you uh, floor Zoltan Surabek as well in that fight. Tough fighter, ready for, for war against Peter McGrail on Saturday. Eres muy experimentado, te hemos visto en esa pelea contra Zorbak, lo tiraste también en esa pelea, uh, listo para una guerra el sábado por la noche. Sí, eh, nosotros venimos preparados para la guerra, seguramente mi oponente también porque es nuestro trabajo y bueno, acá vamos a demostrar que, que nos venimos preparando para estas situaciones. Yes, uh, of course, you know, we, we've come really prepared for war, but I'm sure he has too because that's the game we're in. 
And we're here to show that our hard work will pay off on Saturday night. Thank you, Nicola. Peter, welcome back, mate. Genuinely chuffed to have you as part of the Matchroom team. It's great working with such tremendous talents that you know you can progress and give the opportunity. Dedicated in the gym, bags of talent. This is a tough fight, actually. You know, we've watched this kid before. We know he can punch, but the kind of challenges you want now and feel like you're going to show your very best against the better level opposition. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, there. First of all, obviously, I want to thank you, Frank, my team behind the scenes. It's getting me, getting me back here, getting, getting back under match room. I feel like the match room behind me, my team, I've got my coaches, Paul and Anthony. Uh, all I can see is success, you know what I mean? I'm, I'm on board now with the uh, one of the best promoters, if well, the best, in my opinion, promoter in the world, and, and they're an amazing team. So, yeah, it's, as you said, he's a good step up, and um, he's a good fighter. I respect him, I respect any fighter, but uh, yeah, I just don't think he's on my level, Ed. No, no pressure, but when you look at the new wave of, of Liverpool fighters, a lot of people looking at you to keep this run going of, of big headline acts. You know, we know we've still got Callum Smith going for the world title. You've got Liam Smith with a great win as well. A lot of other Liverpool fighters, but yourself, really, the future of that. You believe you are the man to take this city forward over the next two, three, five years and bring world titles to this city? Yeah, definitely. Going back to, as I said, with a team like Matt Green behind me, all I can see is success and you know what it's like the nights in the echo. It's um, the special nights and even like my debut that um, when Beefy Box Fowler, that was just like a little taster, taster of me for things, what's, what's going to be coming. And um, yeah, just excited, Ed. Well, that was a few rounds. You got 10 rounds on Saturday as this journey gets real this year, 2023, one of the best amateurs this country has ever seen. Peter McGraw moving on to championship fights in 2023 and I believe world championship fights in 2024 as well. Liverpool, make sure you get behind this young man. Thank you so much to Johnny Fisher, Peter McGraw, Rhiannon Dixon, Vicky Wilkinson and Batelli as well. Great fights as we go on to the two main fights on the card. We're going to have head-to-heads up here and join us for the final segment. So that concludes uh, our undercard press conference. Uh, we start with Rhiannon Dixon and, and Vicky Wilkinson. As we mentioned, we're doing 10 rounds for the inaugural Commonwealth Lightweight title. We talked about that um, before they went on stage. Peter McGraw back um, in action on a matchroom bill uh, as well. Talks about his brilliant performance against Alexander Espinosa, who, remember, had a brilliant fight with Cash Farouk over, over 10 rounds. And McGraw dispatched him in four, which is unexpected in what was scheduled to be his first 10 rounder. Um, can Nicholas Patelli take him any further? Patelli um, fought another South for in Sultan's Auerbeck, and it was uh, kind of neck and neck cagey long range boxing match Salbeck a, a different Peter. sort of southpaw to McGrail um, but they both pick a left hand to the body and Salbeck got caught on the counter by Patelli with a right hand uh, and he's a, he's a lively guy in there Patelli's uh, I think his strength and his weakness is all boiled down to one thing he will mix fire with fire he likes to get stuck in that has been one of the reasons why he's been so dangerous and successful, but one of his downfalls also. So he'll have to be switched on this, this, this young man who has got the world at his feet, if I'm honest. I mean, he's got literally everything bar experience at the minute, but bundles of that come from the amateur game anyway. So that's why you're seeing him in 10 rounds already. An exceptional talent. So that will be second uh, on the bill, super bantamweight 10 rounder. There was uh, Rhiannon Dixon. Vicky Wilkinson, who I mentioned, fought for the Commonwealth title at 126 pounds towards the end of last year. Battle to a draw with uh, Chrissy Shergold. I thought she'd actually done enough to to just edge the fight, but Rhiannon Dixon, as we saw against Shergold, far more dominant performance, and she, off the back of both of those, to compare and contrast, probably goes in as a, as a decent-sized favourite um, in our first contest of the night. Johnny Fisher back in action against uh, Alfonso Damiani. We heard from him yesterday, been out sparring stateside with um, Big Joe Joyce and Carlos Takam. I mean, it doesn't get a lot better than that in terms of tough sparring that's going to prepare you. And it seems like he has come on a lot in, in the last year, year and a half, doesn't he? Yeah, he, he's a very intelligent man. Mm. Um, and I like the way, he, how he was saying he's gauging his improvements by how many rounds he could do with Takam, as where uh, previously, you know, wasn't doing as many rounds. and that sort of testament to, to the rate of improvement. Sometimes you can't go through the rounds. Sometimes you do plateau at four or six rounds, but he's obviously doing more than that. And that's because he is improving. He's getting more experience as he goes along. He's learning on the job, but with his popularity, with his team behind him, I'm a big uh, fan of Mark Tibbs. He, he knows his game inside out. He's obviously taking on board what Mark's telling him. So with his fan base, with Matram behind him, the road, the run football journey continues yeah. and it's going to be fun 
for as long as it continues. Yeah, about 5,000 tickets sold uh, all in uh, on Saturday nights. How many were expecting in the arena? Dara Foley stepped in for Liam Parrow uh, as Robbie Davis Jr. is a replacement opponent in our chief support. Uh, and very, very confident um, yesterday when we spoke to him. Um, going to offer something a little bit different to, to Liam Parrow stylistically. We're expecting to see him set up southpaw, but he was going through the pad routine orthodox. And, and we said, is that an indication of what we might see against Davis Jr.? And he said, I'll be ready to fight up, down, left, right, whichever way I need to. Uh, and Davis Jr. had a, a really, really good fight last time out against Javier Molina. Yeah. Um, had to weather a couple of storms yeah. in the fight that he, he dominated in large parts. But that vulnerability and the way he recovers and fights back when he's hurt makes him a brilliant fighter. Yeah, that's why, I, that's why I feel this fight with what's on the line for, for both, the way that they both fight, uh, it's so important. A, damage, a loss now would be so damaging for their careers. Mm. Um, Foley, th this is everything. Since his last defeat, he's had four wins. He's picked up four minor titles. Confidence is high. He believes he's going to win this fight. Robbie Davis Jr., a lot of pressure on him. Change of opponent, three weeks notice, in front of his home fans. He's very close to something bigger. There's a lot of pressure on him, but I just feel when you put all of those into the hat, it makes for a good fight. Two, two very good young trainers in the corner, and Shane McGuigan and, uh, and Ben Sava as well. Of course, Josh Pritchard in Davis Jr.'s corner um, uh, uh, as well. Foley, he's, he's long, he's rangy, he's a good sharp shooter. And uh, he said he's expecting Davis Jr. to be bustling for, but in the process, he could walk onto one. Just going past us uh, on the screen now, as you can as you can see there. And he said, look, I don't expect to get the decision if this goes to points. And I think the inference there is he's going to try and keep things long, walk him onto something. And if he does have a moment, um, which uh, we saw Javier Molina probably wasted a couple of those moments by not putting his foot on the gas and stepping on Davis Jr. when he had the chance. I think the inference we took yesterday is that if, if Foley gets a chance like that, yeah. he will not let it slip on Saturday. No, no, no. And, and it could be the case where he's only had three weeks' notice. He may feel he has a best chance early on. So he may, you know, throw the kitchen sink at Robbie early and, and try and change his life by getting the win on Saturday night. Good stuff. Well, you can see Diego Pacheco in the shot there next to Eddie Hearn. Jack Cullen is on stage too. We're going to hear from our chief support and our main event. Uh, here's Eddie Hearn. Well, welcome back to Liverpool ahead of our huge card at the MS Arena on Saturday night, live and exclusive on zone all around the world. When we got the unfortunate news about Callum Smith's injury, you always faced with a difficult question. You know, do we proceed with a show or do we move the date? We have enough quality on this show, particularly with these two cards, to make sure that we progress. We've still a big crowd in Liverpool, a great night of boxing, and making sure these fighters get the opportunity to get paid and progress their career. And four men up here who all have the opportunity to move in big directions in their career in 2023. We're going to start with a tremendous fight in the 140 pound division between Robbie Davis Jr. and Daryl Foley. Daryl Foley, I keep getting told off for that, Daryl. Daryl, welcome. I've wanted you on a show for a long time. I see you boxing over there in Australia, making some noise. You're a big character. Massive, massive opportunity for you on Saturday night. I'm glad you got me a uh, name right there, Eddie. I got an interview sent earlier in the week, and I was Daryl Foley from Liverpool. <laughs> You'll know exactly who I am on Saturday night, mate. Um, and the belt, what's going on with the belt situation? Well, yeah, I saw you having a little moan up about the belts. I mean, listen, we can try and phone a belt. I feel like you need to earn a shot at the belt, and I think this victory would do it as well. But, you know... We'll have a little look into the belt situation. We'll have, we'll but talk you after. fancy yourself in, in this fight. I know you've been making a lot of noise in Australia. Robbie Davis is a very good fighter. I saw some comments from you yesterday that you feel that he's just on the slide. You see he's been hurt in, in recent fights as well. You believe great timing for you on Saturday night to fight Robbie Davis? I think so, you know. Everything in life is about timing. Um, this opportunity kind of came out of the blue. And I was ready. I stay in shape. And... You know, it's perfect. Like you said, I win this, everything opens up. So I'm coming here to win. Um, you know, any, any interview I get asked, people saying, oh, three weeks, no. Stop saying that. Any interview after this, if you mention three weeks, I'm walking away. That's a built-in excuse. I don't need an excuse. I'm here to win, and that's that. We know you come from a good team as well. You, you know the, the game. You study boxing as well. What do you see in Robbie Davis Jr.? Some, some big wins as well, been part of some big nights. And for you as well, for him as well, victory on Saturday night opens up all those big world-level fights. Yeah, I mean, Robbie, it's... You, you see what you get, you know, a tough man that comes, that brings it, likes to bury his head in your chest and go to work. And that's fine, you know, I never shy away from a fire fight. Um, at least I won't have to go looking for him. And finally, for you, you believe, no question, Dara Foley, victorious on Saturday night, opens up the doors to some huge fights at £140. 
100%. Do you agree? Mm, no. Well, there you go. But I'd like to see you try and prove me wrong. Okay, I will. I good. will. I'll prove you. I'll prove everyone wrong. And if you do, good luck to you because you all land some huge fights. Thank you. Division. Good luck, sir. Robbie, um, Liam Parra originally scheduled. You have an Irishman, but from Australia as well. Um, a very important fight for your career. We know you're training very hard. You've been patient for this opportunity. Back to Liverpool as well. You've got a, a, a fighter that is here 100% to win and uh, a, a must-win fight for you on Saturday night. Yeah, definitely. Um, like I've been saying, in all my past few fights, they're all must-wins for me. Obviously, it was unfortunate with Liam Parrow because what come off the back of that pulling out, but um, I was grateful for Foley stepping up. Um, still gives me a chance to show the general public, the Liverpool fans, um, what I'm still about. And then get the win in dominating fashion and then move on to bigger things later in the year. Is that the key? You, you have to look good in this fight. You have to make a statement in this fight. I know, first and foremost, you need to win this fight, but that's the plan for, for Team Robbie Davis. Yeah, definitely. Um, like what he was saying when he was saying there, he's, see, he's seeing cracks in me. I can't have that going into the big fish after this, so I need to make a statement to not only win, I need to look good as well when doing it. Good win for you last time out against Hank Lundy. Big statement stoppage there. Is that, that the plan for Saturday? Stop this man inside the distance? Yeah, hopefully I can break him down, get, get to him and get him out of there. I'm unbreakable, Robbie. You ain't breaking me down. You ain't breaking me down, mate. <coughs> we'll see. We'll see. If you are breaking me down, you've got to start from 100. I'm only going up against 75%. That's all I got to... The, meet, the meter ain't at 100 no more, brother. We'll you know that. You know that. We'll see. Look forward to this fight, 140 pound. Must win fight for Robbie Davis Jr. and Dara Foley. This one, a tremendous fight. We see one of our young prospects getting put on center stage, 17 and 0. Signed this young man when he was 17 years of age. Now part of the Jose David Benavidez team in America. His biggest test on Saturday night against one of our favorite fighters in Jack Cullen. We've seen him time and time again give us tremendous fights. That great win at fight camp against Abney Yildrim. The fight of the year contender with Felix Cash cruising to a European title victory before that late stoppage uh, previously in Manchester as well. Jack Callan, you're back again. You rise to the challenge. You never say no for a big opportunity. And this time you have a sneaky feeling that you might be too much for this young prospect to my right. Yeah, definitely. 100% mate. Listen, I've put everything into this training camp. I've not, no, no stone unturned. I've done everything right. And uh, you'll see on fight night. I guess sometimes in your career, a few years ago, you were thrust into these big fights and you performed really well, but maybe you're a bit too young, maybe you didn't quite have the experience. When you look back on that experience now, you have plenty of it, and that's going to be key against a young prospect who hasn't yet been tested in the deep end. Plenty of experience, big bollocks, and want to fight. <laughs> and of course, little Lever and the team coming out for you as well. This fight for you is the difference between big fights at world level, monster paydays as well, and, and moving back to domestic level. This one, you know, opens big opportunities on both sides of the Atlantic. Definitely, exactly. I mean, that's what I'm saying, as in putting everything into the training. This is my life, and I want to keep this going. And this man, a good prospect, tall as well. Battle of the tallest super middleweights I think I've ever seen as well. Can punch, but you've studied him, you see cracks in him, and I guess the plan is to take him to deep waters in Liverpool. Stick to the game plan, and then um, we'll get him out of there. Diego, welcome. Um, again, talking to you at the Matchroom HQ this week, you really have gone from boy to man, started your career over in Mexico because you were so young and, and you know, the opportunity now to progress to world honours, tremendous training camp and a very tough fighter in Jack Cullen, ready for a big night in Liverpool on Saturday. Uh, yeah, definitely. You know, I'm just really happy to be here. You know, thankful for the opportunity. Now I get to headline. You know, it's unfortunate what happened to Callum Smith, but... Um, but yeah, I'm just thankful that the show is going on and, you know, I'm, I'm the one on top and I'm um, just excited for Saturday and I'm looking forward to a great night of fighting. Your confidence seems to be improving all the days, all the, every day and so too does your physique as well. You feel like you're really getting your man strength now. Still very young, but those rounds with Benavidez and, and Canelo Alvarez and all these top fighters as well, as well as the, the, the nights under the bright lights, really are turning to a man ready to make your charge at the World Super Middleweight Championship. Yes, definitely. You know, um, like you said, you know, I started off at 17 years old. It doesn't feel like it's been five years, but 
but it's crazy it has been and I feel like I've learned a lot in these five years and um, and I feel it's the perfect time to, to face a guy like Jack Cullen and, and then after this move on to a lot of bigger fights. And this man as well, you've fought some good fighters. I don't believe you've boxed anyone as, as good as Jack Cullen. And as he says, big bollocks uh, to you, that's cojones. Um, this guy has plenty of heart, plenty of ambition as well. Two very tall, very big super middleweights as well. Should lend itself to a great clash of styles. Definitely, yeah. I know it's going to be a great fight. You know, I'm, I'm looking forward to the experience. And, uh, and yeah, everyone tune in and enjoy the show. Thank you, Diego. Thank you, Jack. Great fight in the super middleweight division between Diego Pacheco and Jack Cullen. In the 140 pound division as well, must win, as I said, for Robbie Davis against Daryl Foley. Do not miss it. Live and exclusive on the zone on Saturday night from the MS Arena. We'll see you there. So there we go, our chief support and uh, main event uh, on Saturday night uh, for Robbie Davis Jr. We, we've seen him rebuild under um, Shane McGuigg and Josh Pritchard and, and the team at their gym um, since that defeat to Gabriel Valenzuela a couple of years ago. And he's rebuilt really, really well. Um, precarious position, though, against Dara Foley. And we said to him yesterday, nothing to lose. I think in the sense that he's come in on short notice. But he said, don't mention that. He said, I'm ready to go. And he's really, really up for this, isn't he? Yeah, he was, you know, he was saying, I've got something to lose. This is, this is my career. Defeat now is very damaging and uh, he really fancies it, good talker, uh, he, he looks as if he's someone who keeps himself in shape, though he's only had three weeks notice, he, he'll, he'll be ready for this. He's got an English coach called Ben Sava, who was uh, born in the UK, moved out to Australia, retired I think 2019, he was, was a decent pro, he was 11 and 2, um, and he's a good young coach as well, he said, he said, I think he's missing the fear gene, so he just doesn't worry about anything at all, we'll, we'll go into this fight with full belief, and you can see it in his demeanour, he's just not come for, for, <laughs> no, for no. a payday here. No, um, he fancies the job. How do you think he will approach the fight, Robbie Davis Jr.? Well, look, I think there's a lot of pressure on, on Robbie, and he'll want to entertain his local adoring fans, so I don't feel he'll want to take a step back, he'll want to force the action, so it makes for a great fight. The Diego Pacheco, this is interesting, he's listed as 6'4", I'm going to say he's more like 6'3", and Cullen is more like 6'4", and, and BoxRec is sometimes a little bit judicious with um, their, their measurements, um, let's just say that, but Jack Cullen, tall, got a little bit of height and reach advantage, but he does like to fight inside. Yeah. Um, we were just talking about one of uh, Pacheco's favourite punches, that little bait, lean back and throw the rear hand uppercut, just like Canelo caught Billy Joe Saunders. Not, not usually effective against a tall fighter, but Cullen, he likes to shell up and, and mm. get in close. Um, and as we saw against Sajo, vulnerable to the body, that could be something to look out for. I it? think so, yeah. Uh, and the right hand over the top also um, picks them so, so yeah. well. I, I just feel this is a good gauge to see how good Pacheco is, because we know how good Cullen is, we know how tough he is, we know how much he wants it. And uh, he's always there, he's always giving it his best so Pacheco's gonna have to be at his best here you know he's in there with a guy who truly believes he can upset the apple cart here he truly believes he can win this Jack Cullen question for you when you're on the way up you did a lot of sparring with Carl Froch I know you went out to Mikhail Kessler and you, yeah. you've always said to me how, how horrible those rounds were but at the same time for young fighters like Cullen and Pacheco when you're sparring regularly in camp with guys like David Benavides and Callum Smith who are about as good as it gets in their respective weight divisions what does it give you in terms of your mentality when you go in to big fights like you did at the later stage of your career. Massive, massive and similar, we mentioned this earlier, talking about this man here with his spars with Sakam, the more rounds you're doing, you know, I started doing four rounds with Carl Froch, before you know it, you're doing 12 rounds regularly with Carl Froch, so you understand that you're a decent fighter, you're sparring with someone who's a weight above you, who, who's a world champion and went on to be a future Hall of Famer, mm. you know, you understand, you know, I must be doing something, right? I must be a decent fighter, so it does give you the world of good, uh, the confidence that you need at this stage in your career. I just feel with, for us, the spectator, the viewer, will find out how good Pacheco is, because we know about Jack Cullen. So for us, we haven't seen those spars with Canelo, etc. We know that he's obviously good enough to hold his own and be called back, but for us now to witness him in there with a, you know, a proper, fully fledged professional fighter who, Let's get it right. His career's on the line here, you could say. Good stuff. We're going to hear from Eddie Hearn shortly. I think he's making his way over to, to have a chat with us ahead of uh, Saturday uh, night. Be interesting to see how that one plays out. We just saw Johnny Fisher um, go head-to-head -head with Alfonso Damiani, who's arrived. Big lump as well. Um, and I think, again, Johnny Fisher walking into that one as a, as a big uh, favourite. Eddie? Um, that was, that was nice. Um, Dara Foley's has been a bit of a revelation, hasn't he? Coming in three weeks' notice, he said not to mention it, of course. Um, for Robbie Davis, I, I know he's grateful to, to just be staying on the bill after all the work he put in, but it's a high-risk fight for him, isn't it? Yeah, because he's got plenty to lose all of a sudden. You know, he goes from the Leo, Liam Paro fight, where he's got everything to gain, to everything to lose. And sometimes that build-up towards a big fight 
your mojo just changes a little bit and Darryl Foley was all of a sudden going, do you know what, I beat Robbie Davis Jr. I fancy landing all the big fights. He's been calling out Stevie Spark for about five years. <laughs> Um, he's made plenty of noise in Australia, and he's, to be fair to him, he's been a big fish in a small pond over there. He hasn't yet got a win at Robbie Davis's level on the resume, but he can fight. He is full of confidence. And, you know, there, there's parts of him where he talks about Robbie Davis getting hurt in a couple of fights recently, and he's won those fights, but they feel that he's there for the taking, and, and this is a smash and grab for Darryl Foley, and it would be massive for his career. Is, is the winner likely to fight Paro? Yeah, you've got Paro, you've got Stevie Spark, you know, you've got a lot of fighters. You've got Richardson Hitchens at 140 as well, our guy. So we've got Montana Love, we've got a lot of fighters at yeah, 140. Yeah. Whoever wins this fight is going to jump into yeah. one of those guys. So it's a massive opportunity. And, and just like you say, it's just the, the mentality's gone, has changed in this fight, you know, between Robbie Davis thinking, do you know what, I could nick Liam Paro's world ranking to Daryl Foley saying, I could yeah, nick yeah. Robbie Davis's yeah. career. Pressure, pressure on Davis Jr. here, I feel, because he's on the cuffs of something big. You know, he's worked so hard, 33 now in his 27th fight. This is a must win. Must I mean, win. I mean, a, a, a defeat here would be so damaging. Yeah, I think it would it? be career ending. Yeah. In all honesty, you know, you've seen him in big fights at domestic level. Great fight with Lewis Ritson. You know, those big nights. He wants to go beyond that. He wants those world level fights. Yeah. So defeat to Foley would be a, a real blow for Robbie Davis Jr. I think Foley's got to be aggressive in this fight. Sometimes he can be a little bit fiddly and, you know, I think he has to go for broke in this fight because if he does see weaknesses and frailties in Robbie Davis Jr., he's got to try and find them. Yeah, that's where Molina didn't capitalise, wasn't it? Um, just looking elsewhere, I mean, you mentioned uh, O'Hara Davis and Lewis Ritson. Of course, O'Hara Davis won that eliminated. We're, we're hearing maybe Progo Catterall's in the works as well, of course, Taylor and Tiafimo. When he mentioned the situation with the belts there, what, what was he specifically referring to? He wanted a belt on the line oh, for the okay, fight. Fine. You know, I'll say, well, you can pay for it then. <laughs> you know, um, and he's but, but look, he's probably got a point, but I said to him, you prove yourself here and you'll be fighting for a belt. So, good fight, looking forward to it. But, but I guess similar to, to the main event in the sense that it's the same sort of for Cullen. He's probably got to, you know, put it all on the line. Just, just get in there and give it your all. We spoke to him yesterday and been in this game for a long time. You can tell when someone's sort of lying or hiding behind their words. He genuinely believes, Jack Cullen, he's got enough sort of boxing know-how, uh, experience. He sort of, he suffered the good, the bad, the ugly, Jack Cullen. He, yeah. he, he sort of done it all. He's experienced losses and wins. He fancies this one. The reality is, is we can hype up a young fighter as much as you want. The truth is, Diego Pacheco has never really boxed anyone with serious substance. Jack Cullen would beat everybody Diego Pacheco's ever boxed and would beat them well. He's travelling to Liverpool. All of a sudden, he's headlining a show out of nowhere. He's done so much media this week as well, which is a concern for fighters in general. How, how long week. ago did he come over, do we know? He's been over for about 10 days, so he's, he's, he's got plenty of notice. But I'm just saying it's different. You know, normally you're kind of like before the bell, you, you're yeah. fighting on a Canelo Alvarez undercard, not many people are talking to you. All of a sudden, he's done his own media work out in London. He's done one in Liverpool. He's come to the office. He's done all this media. That can sometimes, the special ones, that can give him another gear. But do you think he's a special one? I do. Yeah. I do. You know, I see him progress now. You look at the frame and the way his body's changed from, obviously, from 17 to now 22. Yeah. He's 17 and 0. He's working with Benavidez. He's been sparring with Canelo, with Bivol, mm. with, with David Benavidez as well. This is, I think this is a serious fighter. But I rate Jack Cullen. He's got great chin. He's got a big, big heart. Fight anyone. You know, he will. And he's given us, every time he's given us great fights. Abney Yildrim, Felix Cash, uh, Kevin Sadjo last time. He was winning that yeah, fight winning. comfortably. And he got a brutal mm. body shot, which he's got a be careful of on Saturday night yeah, as we well. Just said that, because yeah. Pacheco can really punch. Yep. He's not really a big body puncher, Diego. You know, he's an upright fighter. I mean, two of the biggest super middleweights I've seen. They're mm. taller than me. They're like six foot five, six foot six. I think it's going to be a really good fight. And, and you know with Jack Cullen, he'll give it everything. And he's had a full camp with Callum Smith as well, which, which couldn't be better preparation. And of course, Pacheco's had a full camp with Benavides ahead of his fight next weekend. Um, speaking of Callum Smith, what's, what's the latest with him is, is the the Turbier fight, what we're looking at next? Yeah, I think that'll be next. We've written to the WBC and, and the WBC have confirmed that that fight will be ordered. Negotiations will begin respectfully after Ramadan for, for Arta Betabir. Yeah. So that fight's going to be next for Callum Smith. You're going to see that in the summer. And we'd love to bring that to Liverpool. I think it's a tremendous fight and uh, one I believe Callum can win. Would he have anything like even a six-rounder just to tune up to get the rust off or would he go straight know. into I mean, it? look, he's, uh, people sometimes, whenever there's an injury, some people go, oh, that sounds a bit dodgy. Any fighter will tell you, he's done a 12-week camp, right? He's done 10 weeks in America, away from his family. He's done two weeks in Liverpool, and he got injured in the last week. He don't get paid. He was making a lot of money on Saturday yeah. night for a, a fight that 
quite honestly, should have been fairly routine for Callum Smith. He really wanted that fight. The reality is negotiations are going to begin. And once those negotiations begin, it stops you from having another fight at all. Yeah. So we need to get that fight made. Callum Smith's ready. He's ready to take the opportunity to try and become a two-division champion. And what a fight against Arta Betterbeer. Anything you can give us with John Ryder, Canelo, Katie Taylor, Cameron? I mean, John Ryder, very close now. We're just finalising the paperwork. Hopefully there'll be a press conference next week. Massive opportunity for him and a great fight for DAZN as well. Katie Taylor, for the first time in her career, calling someone out on social media. And, <laughs> right, isn't it? You know, for a long time, people in boxing said she'll never fight Chantel Cameron. You know, Brian will never take that. Rod, oh, they won't fancy that. We sat down and she wants Chantel Cameron bad. I think for that reason, this is a tougher fight than Amanda Serrano, in my opinion. This is a big, big 135 pounder that's now a 140 pounder. You know, this is a two undisputed champions going at it. A chance for Katie Taylor to become undisputed in two divisions. She will step up to fight Chantel Cameron. It's the opportunity we've wanted to progress, pre present to her. And fair play to both. Both say we want it. We're negotiating at the moment. Both girls have to be, you know, rewarded in the right way for that fight. As we see in boxing often, when two fighters want the fight, generally it happens. Same date. Same date. Ireland, three arena. Still work to be done. Hopefully, we can give you some positive news. Paul McGregor still involved? Yeah, he'll be involved some way. <laughs> and uh, hopefully, we can give you some good news at the weekend, maybe even on broadcast. But that is definitely the plan to make that fight. Awesome. Thanks very much, Eddie. Uh, well, so four fights on before the bell, starting at half past four Saturday. We've got George Liddell, Paddy Lacey, Campbell Hatton, and Akif Fiaz, and Dean Dodge doing battle as well. Rhiannon Dixon, uh, Vicky Wilkinson will be contesting the inaugural Commonwealth lightweight title first on the bill, seven o'clock. Peter McGrail back in action as well. Big Johnny Fisher and Alfonso Damiano will do battle. Robbie Davis Jr. and Dara Foley looking to kick off at 140 pounds and the main event Diego Pacheco the super middleweight prospect will he be super or is Jack Cullen getting him at the right time all will be revealed Saturday night but for now thanks for your company and we will see you one o'clock tomorrow afternoon for the weigh-in